Welcome to Around the Dog World here in the picturesque Warwickshire countryside. We are here today to see the best of the best go head to head for the chance to take a trip of a lifetime. Welcome to the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. Here at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final, we see the UK's best dogs competing for a trip to Orlando, Florida where the world's best dogs compete at the Yukonuba World Challenge, where the winner takes away a grand prize of $10,000. But first, we need to see who will accompany this year's Crufts Best in Show winner, Jilly, champion sole trader Peekaboo as the UK representatives. One dog here has to beat the stiff competition under two secret judges to join the world's best in Florida. However, before we go any further, we need to take a look back to fill in the gaps since our last programme. That's right. Now, since our last outing at Richmond Championship Dog Show, we have seen four general championship shows, all of which went the way of two dogs from the same kennel. That's right. Not long ago, we spoke about Afterglow making up their 100th champion, and the success just keeps on going. After Richmond was Darlington, um, and their top gun dog, Pearl the American Cocker, takes best in show. And over the next few weeks, there were three more shows, Driffield, Belfast and South Wales, where we saw another afterglow, top utility, Ricky, the standard poodle, come out top. Yeah, that's four out of the last five best in shows for Ricky. Um, and the other one went to his kennel mate. So a, a fantastic run for afterglow Incredible. at the moment. Uh, both Ricky and Pearl are here today. So, so that momentum cannot harm their, their chances. Certainly not. And just a few days ago was Gun Dog Society of Wales, where we saw a group winning dog from Windsor last year take yeah. best in show. Yeah, that was the Welsh Springer Spaniel, uh, show champion Ferndale Aaron McGregor. Is that think how you say it? I think it's how you say it. <laughs> um, a really fantastic win in the breed, racking up 35 cc's. And he's had a lot of success in the group ring as well. Yeah. He's had two group ones. And several placings to his name as well. Now we need to look at the top dog table because Ricky's run has not just put him in contention, but he's actually only five points behind Oliver, the Wirefox Terrier. Yeah, I remember speaking to Di Johnson early in the year, almost writing off the, the top dog competition. You should never do that. Never do that, no. <laughs> Oliver's only been able to hold on to the top spot with a couple of reserve best in shows behind Ricky. Um, at Belfast and South Wales. But it is still really close. Don't forget Tiffany, the Australian Shepherd. She's still not out of it yet yeah, either. And she's got more points on offer than, than anyone else on the table. Right, before we get carried away, let's get back to what we're here for today. Hold on, before they get too carried away, there's actually more on today's show. But don't tell them, it's a secret. <laughs> we are going to show you all that goes wrong during the filming of Around the Dog World. But for now, it's back to the Scottish one with the teeth and the excitable one about yay high. OK, so let's go and meet some of our competitors for the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes Final 2013. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to this, the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes Final 2013. 25 dogs shall compete and shall be judged independently by two judges. Each judge will score the dogs out of 100. The seven highest scoring dogs shall return to the ring and be scored afresh by the judges. However, first, it's our great pleasure to welcome back last year's overall winner, the Beach and Frise, champion Arthlons, ready to rumble. <laughs> winner of four CCs. Rumble has been retired from the show ring after winning this event last year. He signed the top Beach and female 2013 and two other further CC winners. The Yukonuba World Challenge is a truly international competition which provides the opportunity for 45 canine finalists and their owners from all over the world to an all expenses paid trip to Orlando. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Beach and Frise champion Arthlorns ready to rumble. So without further ado, let's introduce you to our finalists, champion Anavar Ginny. Champion and Luxembourg champion, Sue Peters, Ozzy Osbourne. Champion, Sue Peters, Razalicious. Champion, Fox Factor, Pied Piper. Show champion, Netherlands champion, Cavacan, top at the top. Champion, Kiswail, Martin at Cadiz. The Tibetan Terrier, champion, Kaibo, Pandorama. This is champion, Moralak, the gambling man. Champion, Zagrest, Hugo Boss. This is show champion, Lockfain, and Alsa approach to Glenn Morangi. Champion, Jaffrak, pistols at dawn. Show champion Trimere Tigra, champion Nikara Diamond Dancer, champion Baghdad Kareem, 
champion and Irish champion, Kestos Ice by a great ball. This is show champion Will Cremain, Ice Maiden. Show champion Hernwood, Diamond Rock. Standard Poodle, champion Afterglow, Maverick Sabre. This is champion Shalfleet, Simply Allures. The American Cock Spaniel, show champion Afterglow, Pearls of Singer. Champion Edgelodian, Singing the Blues. Chinese Crested, champion Mongoshi, Gate Crusher. Champion Sir Peter's Secret Wizard at Drogsky. The Wire Fox Terrier, champion Traveller, Striking Steel. And completing our 27, we have champion Kaluni, Going Dutch, The Whippet. Now it's time to meet the two judges upon whom the honour, and it has to be said looking at this lineup, the challenge to now select their winner. So ladies first, and needing very little introduction to the ringside or this competition. She's been a regularly qualifying breed owner herself with her very successful Gunnel Weimaraners. She awards CCs in 32 breeds across four groups. Please show your appreciation, ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Patsy Hollins. <laughs> the second of our judges is equally well known. Secretary of Blackpool, he is one of the UK's most sought after all rounder judges. He awards CCs in 44 breeds across four groups. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Hall. So Steve and Patsy, if we can ask you to take your first initial look of the 25 before they leave the ring to assemble into their groups. Thank you very much to our 25 finalists. We'll now see you shortly for your individual assessment in the groups. So we have group one now, and that's number 13, the English Springer, number 13. The Samoyed, number 14. And the order now, that's 17, the pointer. Number five, the German Shorthead Pointer. And completing the five, number two, the Doberman. The name Springer is derived from the use of this type of Spaniel to startle the bird into the air so that they spring upwards. The English Springer, with his black and white or liver and white markings, is a traditional dog for the rough shooter. A dog capable of working tirelessly all day, ready to enter water even when he has to break ice to do so. The English Springer Spaniel, number 13. An ancient working breed, the Samoyed is very close to the primitive dog. No mixture or wolf or fox runs through the breed's gene pool. He was developed by the Samoyed people of Siberia. They use the dogs for herding reindeer, hunting and hauling sledges, as well as guard work. The Samoyed, number 14. We now have number 17, the pointer being assessed. The pointer is said to have originated in Spain, but he has undoubtedly become a truly English breed over the last two or three centuries. During this time, he has been employed in his traditional role of indicating the presence and position of sitting game. Number 17, the pointer. German shorthair pointer stems from dogs known collectively as bird dogs. The basis for the breed was almost certainly the kennels of Prince Albrecht Sonsons Baunfell, who owned Schweizsons, a breed of good but slowish working hounds with outstanding ability to scent game. They were then crossed with traditional English pointer stock. thought that the Doberman Pinscher originated in Germany in the 19th century, taking its name from tax collector Louis Doberman, who desired a medium-sized dog to perform as a guard dog, as well as a companion, and an incentive for the tax people to pay. The Doberman, number two. Thank you very much, that completes our first group. now have the second group, starting with the second of our Dobermans, number 25. The 
L pound, number 16. Number 22, the American Cocker Spaniel. Number nine, the Irish Wolfhound. And number 12, the French Bulldog. Our judges will follow the same format as before, individual assessments of each exhibit, and then scoring. This is the second of our Dobermans appearing today. It's believed that breeds utilized to develop the Doberman may have included the Rot Violet, Black and Tan Terrier, and the German Pinscher to combine a mix of brain, soundness, toughness of character, and quick Terrier-like reaction. The Doberman, number 25. the elk hound. The breed is a very solid breed for a hound, but he needs to be able to cope with his traditional prey, the elk. A spitz type with prick ears and curly tail, he is a friendly dog, but his loud voice acts as a deterrent to unwanted visitors. Number 16, the elk hound. Derived in the last century in the USA from the Cocker Spaniel, ostensibly to retrieve quail, the American Cocker has very striking differences from his English forebear. The prominent rounding of his skull is most distinctive, as are the full eyes set to look straight forward. The American Cocker Spaniel, number 22. Originally, the Irish Wolfhound could be found with either a smooth or a rough coat, though in early years there was probably great variance of type. After the last wolf was killed in Ireland before 1800, the breed almost died out and was further affected by the Great Famine of the late 1840s. There followed a restoration of the breed by 1870, and a breed club was in existence by 1885. The Irish Wolfhound, number nine. Now we come to the French Bulldog, a compactly built dog who, in spite of his name, is believed to be at least partly of British origin. He is descendant of the Toy Bulldog, which was bred during the 19th century and exported to France, where the breed became popular. The French Bulldog, number 12. group. The first one in is number 21, the Whippet. Followed by number 24, the Chinese Crested. Number 26, the Wire Fox Terrier. Number 11, the Golden Setter. And followed by the second of the Golden Setters, number 19. This is the Chinese Crested, and while it is difficult to pinpoint their origin, it is said that these dogs were introduced to China by returning mariners and were later owned by families of the Han Dynasty. The Chinese Crested were developed as guardians of the treasure houses and in a larger, heavier form, even worked as hunting dogs. Chinese Crested, number 24.
Originally known as the rough-haired terrier and used for sporting pursuits, the wire fox terrier is a native breed. It is probable that the rough coat was developed before that of the smooth fox terrier, but strangely the appearance of the wire fox terrier in the show ring was some 20 years later than that of the smooth. Gordon Setter, as his name implies, hails from the estates of the Dukes of Gordon and has a long history of honest trainability which endears him to those who appreciate a kindly intelligent dog capable of enjoying all the exercise a household could give him. The Gordon Setter, number 11. The Gordon Setter is a stylish dog built on the lines of a weight-carrying hunter. He comes in one colour pattern, black and tan, and the breed should give the impression of being able to work steadily, but without glamour. Number 19, the Gordon Setter. Exhibitors, if you can now take your dogs round and out of the ring, please. We now move on to the fourth of our groups. And first, number four, the Border Terrier. Followed by number 27, the Whippet. Number 20, the Standard Poodle. Number eight, the Tibetan Terrier. And number one, the Beagle. The Border Terrier was once known as the Reedwater or the Cockatdale Terrier after the localities of his early days. His present name was adopted around 1880, probably because he worked with the Border Foxhounds. But it was 40 more years before the breed was recognised by the Kennel Club. The Border Terrier, number four. Having evolved for over a hundred years, it was not until 1891 that the Whippet was recognised by the Kennel Club. He was used for racing in the northeast early on, and the breed was nicknamed, somewhat unfortunately, as the poor man's racehorse. This is the Whippet, number 27. All three varieties of Poodle have their country of origin listed as France, but Germany is believed to have been their actual home, the breed entering France with German soldiers. It came from the marshes of Germany, where it was already well established as a water retriever. Number 20, the standard Poodle. In spite of his name, the Tibetan Terrier is not a terrier, but actually a herding dog, doubling as a guard dog for traders as they journeyed to and from China. He succeeded in his job not so much by size, but through the awe in which he was held. This is believed to be the original holy dog of Tibet. Number eight, the Tibetan Terrier. The Beagle is one of the most popular of the hounds. Despite success in the show ring, he retains his natural hunting instinct. Sturdy, bold and active, he is blessed with an equable and merry temperament. The origin of the name may have been derived from the French term, Beagle. This is the Beagle, number one.
Thank you very much to our exhibitors. If you'd take them round and exit the ring, please. That brings us to our final group. We have the first contender, which is number 15, the Saluki. Followed by number 10, the long-haired Dachshund. Number three, the Whippet. Number 23, the Shetland Sheepdog. And number seven, the Pointer. The royal dog of Egypt, the Saluki, has always been a much prized possession of the Arabs. They were held in such great esteem that their bodies were often mummified like those of the pharaohs themselves. His highly developed hunting instinct and the speed with which he moves over all types of terrain suit him well for work in the Middle East. That's the Saluki number 15. Germany is the Dachshund's home country, and a literal translation of the name is Badger Dog. In Germany, the sizes are separated not by weight, but by chest circumference, with three sizes being based on what size of hole they could go, they could enter when going to ground. The long-haired Dachshund, number 10. As I mentioned earlier, the Whippet was used for racing in the northeast, and as races often had to be held in alleyways between houses, the dogs developed into straight races, with some covering 200 yards in as little as 12 seconds. This is the Whippet, number three. The Shetland Sheepdog's history traces back to the border collie of Scotland, which, after being transported to the Shetland Islands and crossed with small, intelligent, long-haired breeds, was eventually reduced to miniature proportions. Over time, subsequent crosses were made with collies. This is number 23, the Shetland Sheepdog. Pointer combines a distinctive elegance with a sleek muscularity which enables him to cover great areas of ground at considerable speed. His movement is distinguished by his habit of carrying his head reasonably high as he tests the air until it is lowered to the characteristic point as he indicates his quarry. It's the Pointer, number seven. Now, thank you very much to our exhibitors. If you can take them round and exit the ring, please. <laughs> that concludes the five groups having been judged and scored. And we will now see them return one by one before the scores are collated and a shortlist decided. So in numerical order, coming in first is the Beagle, number one. And last but by no means least, number 27, third of our whippets. That's all our 25 contenders in place. All stood in front of their pictures, which they get to keep, kindly donated by you can Uber. And the shortlist is here. 
The first dog going through to the shortlist is number 14, the Samoyed. Number 26, the wire-haired fox terrier. Number 23, the Shetland Sheepdog. Number 22, the American Cocker Spaniel. Number 8, the Tibetan Terrier. Number 10, the long-haired Dachshund. And we have one space left remaining, and that's being filled by number 20, the standard poodle. A huge thank you to the remainder of our contestants as they exit the ring, please. An enormous achievement to have made it to the final here at Yukonuba. Congratulations. the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight? Yes. What would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final 2013. Now, over the past couple of years on Around the Dog World, we've featured more than 20 championship shows, the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Finals and the Dog World Purina Pro Plan Pup of the Year Finals. We've also been to the European Flyball Championships, Agility Semi Finals, and featured three gun dog, four hound, five terrier and four toy breeds. And what you all get to see is tidied and edited so you get to see the best of the action all of the time. But today you get to see some of the stumbles, gaffes and blunders that we on this side of the camera would rather you didn't. I know, I need a hair band, it's too windy! Um, we're actually in Stuart Bailey's bedroom, and not a lot of people can say that. Well, that's what you think. <laughs> uh, Hound Group was in first, and yes. a, a new Irish Water... Yes, Ar yes, yeah. nice to see a, a, a new Wolfhound, one. Sorry. Yeah, well, Irish Wolfhound, <laughs> called Papplewick Preacher Man. Third ticket. That was the Papillon. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> I'm not usually like this, it's her putting a jinx on us. But it's that, uh, what do you call, colour heart? Is it Harlequin or not? No! <laughs> so back in 2011, we produced my very own handling DVD. And during the filming on the day, I got a little bit too close to the wildlife. And train with your dog. Simple. <laughs> ah, it didn't work! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that bee's got to go now. <laughs> Scene one, take two. Take four. What's this, take six? Heather? Introduction one, take seven. Take eight, mm -hmm. introduction one. Puff of the Year sees 31 of 2012's top pup, pup, hip, pup, 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 pup. And the first show in 2012, New Year, we saw a new Best in Show winner. Was that? No, I'm going to do it again. Just I was getting into it. Trying to get it all in the head. None of it went in. New Year, a new Best in Show winner. And it would help if I knew what the dog's name was. <laughs> Uh, new year and a new best in show winner. <laughs> really good. Yeah. Lovely condition. Lo if you don't mind, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> lovely condition and. Um, Are you ready? So you're going to all behave. Yes. We're we'll going to do, do this all in one. We'll do our very best to behave, won't we? Okay. Are you ready? And action. <laughs> and action. <laughs> so. Oh. 
How much battery life have we got left, Simon? All oh, right, oh, okay. All oh, right, well, when's the ferry going? We've got lots of time. <laughs> Best in show at Belfast 2012. <laughs> and I think we can both agree that Yukonuba Champion Stakes isn't the best place for presenters. This event will go through to the Yukonuba World Channel Finals. World Channel, the Yukonuba World Channel, to the Yukonuba World Channel. Why can I not say that word? Sorry. Held here at the Chess or held here at the Chessford Grange. Here at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes, we see the UK's best dogs all coming to compete to take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are here today to see the best of the best go head to head for the chance. To... What are you doing, man? Welcome to the Yukonuba World. World challenge, I was going to say. Welcome to the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Finals. <laughs> the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Finals and the Dog World Purina Pro Plan Start, yeah. Cup of the Year Finals. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Finals and the Dog World Purina Pro blah, 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 oh. and the Dog World Purina Pro Plan Pup of the Year Finals. You were listening to me yeah, saying the P's right. Thank you very much, my darling. Thank you. Is that it? Hi, Dr. Please show your appreciation. Number eight, the Tibetan Terrier. Number ten, the long haired Daxon. Number 14, the Samoheads. <laughs> Number 20, the Standard Pool. Number 22, the American Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Number 23, the Shetland Sheepdog.
Number 26, the Wild Fox Terrier. Thank you very much to our shortlist. If you can now exit the ring, please. Please give them a big hand. Our shortlisted finalists will now wait in a holding area while the boards are brought out and the final scores are collated as given by Steve and Patsy. Scores are in. In reverse order, in fifth place, it's number 14, the Samoyed champion, Nikara Diamond Dancer. Fourth place. Number 23, the Shetland Sheepdog champion, Edlonian, singing the blues. In third place, it's the American Cocker, number 22, show champion, after the Elsa Singer. In second place, Second place. Number 26, the Wire Fox Terrier, champion Travella, striking steel. We're left with three dogs that were shortlisted, still in contention for first place. There are, of course, the Tibetan Terrier, the Long-Haired Dachshund, and the Standard Poodle. And the winner of the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Finals of 2013 is... It's number 20, it's the Standard Poodle. <laughs> Champion Afterglow Maverick Sabre. Congratulations. He'll be taking that opportunity, I hope, to go to the World Challenge in Orlando with an opportunity to win a $10,000 prize. And please give a big hand for the two remaining shortlisted who are who outside, the Tibetan Terrier and the Longhead Jackson. Jason, if we can see you take them round, please, leading off with our winner today, the Standard Poodle. Show champion, sorry, champion, Afterglow Maverick Sabre. 
Followed by second, the Wire Fox Terrier, champion to leather, strike and steel. Third, the American Cocker Spaniel, show champion, Arthur Glow, Pearls of Singer. The Sheltie, champion, Edlonian, singing the blues. And the Samoyed, champion, Nakara, diamond dancer. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you had a good afternoon. It was an exciting lineup and it's been an exciting finish. Thank you very much. We hope on behalf of you can we see you all again next year. Yukonuba Champion Stakes winner heading to Florida is Ricky Michael. You had two in the last five there. That must have been incredible. It, well, I was really, really so proud because, you know, um, the crumb has been with us since she was a kid, 13 years old, and she's doing such a fabulous job with that Cocker Spaniel. I was like, oh my God, she's really going to be in contention. I was delighted when she was third, so it was fantastic. And of course, Billy's wire, number two, and us number one. It was just a terrific, terrific day. Was, we, we were absolutely so proud. It's all, ultimately, it's always got to be about the performance, and the performance of the dogs was just, you know, mind-blowing. The win's like a big bonus, but it, it, initially it's about them making you proud when they go around the ring. And Jason, it must be nerve-wracking coming into a ring full of such quality as well. Yeah, it was such a, a great lineup of beautiful dogs, all in their own right, who have done fantastic things throughout the year. So yeah, it was the best of the best, and it was a great opportunity to see all of them in the ring at the same time. Um, and you're you're up against the Wire Fox for for top dog. The, unfortunately, the Champion Stakes doesn't count, but there's there's not long left now. This affects your you're going to LKA, which is obviously worth quite a lot of points in in the race. Is how do you feel about that? Well. Look, at the end of the day, everybody's been talking about these top, this group of dogs that have been top dog, and particularly the two that are in contention for top dog, which is him and the wire. So if we finish the year number two and, and it costs us yes. by not going to LKA, then, you know, we've been beaten by a really good dog, yeah. and people will remember this dog, he was number two. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> we, I mean, we, it'll be a fight to the bitter end, believe me. <laughs> you know, I mean, Billy and Jason and myself and Richard, we are real competitors, you know? Yeah. So, and there's a, and actually, we've been having a laugh and a joke about it. There's no people getting nasty, and it, yeah. I can guarantee you 100%, there's been no vileness whatsoever. It's, of course, Billy Brown Gold, Cole gave him his first best in show, yeah. so, yeah. you know. Yeah. It kind of proves that we can have top dogs and admire one another's dogs, yeah, so it's absolutely. great. And Jason, Ricky went to PCA earlier this year and has already done fantastically well on the other side of the pond. Great hope for, for your next travel. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, only, he's been shown there once and he was best of winners at the Poodle National Specialty, so we'll try a second trip <laughs> and see if we can do as well. But he, um, the great thing about him is he's such a, an easy laid-back dog to travel and you know, it doesn't stress him out. He's such a joy to have. It's been a great opportunity having him. Um, and as we've we've spoken to you in the past, and people have said that this is perhaps the best you've ever had. Well, in you your know, in your mind, is he the best? Well, it, it's it's interesting, really, because uh, this dog has got such a great heritage. I mean, his father was a multiple best of show winner. His uh, his grandfather was a winner. Uh, he was top poodle when we retired him. But his his father was Donny, of course, who was top dog all breeds and who won this competition some years ago and represented Yukon in, Uber in yeah. California then. So I just think that if you could take the best of his pedigree and put them together, then that's what we got in this dog. So, And it's kind of what you dream as as a breeder, you know? Pretty special, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, best of luck and have a fantastic time in Florida. Yeah, Thank certainly you. will. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. I'm delighted to be joined by the Yukon Uber Champion Stakes 2013 judges. Now, first of all, Patsy, that looked an incredible lineup. I think on paper, everyone was thinking that's possibly the strongest Champion Stakes lineup it ever. It was just incredible. Yes, the, the exhibits were fantastic. It was a wonderful lineup. It was an absolute honour to be invited to judge it and to see those magnificent dogs. It was a great contest, a great contest. 
I think performance was what had to clinch it because the quality was there. So it had to be performance. And of course, the standard just performed out of his skin, quite frankly. You, hear, you have a lovely judging manner that we Thank can you. sort of almost read it on your face when you absolutely <laughs> get blown away by a dog. Um, is, that, is that what we're seeing, what you're thinking at the same time? Yeah, probably, because <laughs> when you see the standard go round, he makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. He's just an incredible dog. But, you know, the, the lineup was fabulous. They, they were all put in a really good performance. Not one dog didn't put in a good performance. And the final seven were all exceptional on the day. And the lineup at the end, I think we both agreed. We stood there and looked and thought, this is a fabulous lineup. I think we've done a good job. Now, Steve, do you agree with that? Do you think you did, did a good job between the two of you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, <clears throat> out of the actual lineup, three dogs I'd give CCs to. So, which, which is good really. And with me and Pat say, we were thinking the same all the time. And I believe it was extremely close. We certainly so, can't read what you're thinking on your face when you judge. No. You have a very stern look about you, yeah. and no disrespect, no. but we can't read it at all. No, that's what it should be. <laughs> that's what it should be, because you should keep it to your chest and you should, surprises are great, you know. I used to surprise when I was a kid, but I don't get them anymore. <laughs> but, but no, overall, I think, I think it was good with Patsy because I've judged with people before and, and they're different than me and, and it's a mishmash of a thing but today it works out perfect yeah and it's a nice way as well that when you've got this point system because you actually don't know what's going to end up in your oh, top no, ten. No. one I had third got a different figure so yeah you don't know do you yeah I, you know I determined it should have been third but it didn't get third so and I'm not going to tell you it is. Oh, go on. No, no. <laughs> so it's, it's quite fair, you mean. And, and then I spoke to Patsy after she said she might have been a bit harsh with it. But that's how it is. That's how it pans out. There were no twists with it. It was just yeah. dead genuine. Everything was genuine. Yeah. Different judges' eyes come out differently, don't they, as well? Yeah, I think when you judge, you should want to take the breed forward. It's not about personalities. It's not about who's handling. It's about the dog on the day. And the winners should reflect breed type and... and this dog and handler all well in fact all the dogs and handlers worked well together today and they were all quality dogs which is fantastic that the judges throughout the year have put through such quality dogs because judging is a passion we are in the dog showing world to take breeds forward healthily happily with good temperaments and very sound and this is what we found today i feel that these dogs are good representatives they're very healthy they're very sound and they're all typical of the breed so it was a great pleasure to be the judges on this particular day there we are Di. the yukonoba champion stakes is all wrapped up for another year and what a final it was fabulous wasn't it yeah. i think it's the best one yet the judges were good we ended up with the top dogs of the year all of those dogs were group winners yeah just two bitches you know, and the others were males, yes. and, but all of them good, all appreciated. The crowd support showed that. Yeah. This is becoming the weekend of the year, isn't it? It is. <laughs> the quality of the field in there, as you said, there were several group winners, yeah. and in the last five, f four of them um, yeah. have won best in they shows have. in about the last three months. Yeah. yeah. High, high quality. Yeah, it is. It was a great competition. We are, can be proud. There are good dogs in this country Definitely. still. Definitely. And how do you rate um, Ricky's chances on the other side of the Atlantic? Well, if any dog can do well over there, that standard poodle is something special. You know, I've, yeah. you know, I've always thought, if we're going to send a dog abroad, I would think Ricky's the best <laughs> one to send. And a, a phenomenal record. Two dogs in the top five. Yeah. They've made up the 100th champion recently. Yeah. They're on yeah. a run of five best in yeah. shows. Yeah. There is little yeah. more they can ask for. Absolutely. And not one thing we can resent or think they don't deserve. Well, thank you very much, Di, <laughs> and I'm sure we wish them all the best in Orlando. Oh, we sure do. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again at Midland County.